Hi guys, it's Ian here from Crack Maths, here for part two of the Essential Formula collection, where I'm going through all the formula that you need to know for your level two functional skills maths exam. As a side, if you want to download this formula sheet, you can find it available at crackmaths.co.uk. I have put a link in the description. So after, after the video, make sure you go down to check it out. Okay then, so let's begin. So if you have a look on the screen, what you'll see is I have a volume of a cube question here. And it says that the volume of a cube is side times side times side. Now the reason it's side times side times side is because the cube is a 3D shape made up with all the sides being the same length. So I'm gonna say that the side length for this is six centimeters. So now if the side length for the cube is six centimeters, that means that we can use this formula side times side times side, which will be six times six times six. Now I know that six times six is 36 and then 36 times six, I'm gonna do on my calculator. So 36 times six equals 216 centimeters cubed. Okay, great, let's look at the next formula. So the second formula we have here is for volume of a cuboid. So we can see that this is length times width times height. Okay, it's the same as a cube really, but the length, width and height might have different measurements for the cuboid. Okay, so let's say that the length is two, the width is three and the height is four. And let's say that this time this is in meters. So what we now need to do to work out the volume of this shape, we simply do two times three times four. Two times three is six, six times four is 24. So the answer to this question will be 24 meters cubed. Okay, now let's look at the volume of a triangular prism. So the formula for this one is base times height divided by two, which you might recognize because that bit gives us the area of the triangle. And then after that, we have times length. Okay, so let's give this triangular prism some dimensions and we will find out its volume. Okay, so this time I've said the height is 10 meters, the base is eight meters and the length is 20 meters. So first of all, let's work out the area of that triangle. So that's gonna be 10 times eight, which is 80, then divided by two, which gives us 40. And now what we need to do is we need to times that by the length, which is 20. So 40 times 20 gives us 800. So the volume of this is 800 meters cubed. Okay, now we've got the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is actually very similar to the volume of the triangular prism. So what you can see is we have pi r squared times length, where the pi r squared simply gives us the area of the circle, and then we times it by length to get that third dimension. So for this question, let's say we've got a radius of five centimeters and a length of eight centimeters. So now we can simply put this into our formula. Now remember, squared means to multiply something by itself. So we've got pi, which is 3.14 times five times five, times eight. And then I'm gonna put all of that into my calculator. And that gives us 628. And the units this time was in centimeters. So this would be centimeters cubed. For the last formula on our volume sheet, we've got the volume of any prism. Now this is actually, again, like the triangular prism and like the cylinder, it's simply the area of the shape on the front times the length, which gives it that third dimension. Okay, so for this pentagon, let's say we've got an area of the front of 20 centimetres squared and a length of 15 centimetres. All we do is we're going to do the area of the face times the length. So we're going to do 20 times 15 and that equals 300 centimetres cubed. Okay, great. Right, let's move on. For this next page, we have got compound measures. And so the formulas that you need to know for these are things like speed equals distance divided by time. Now with these, the clue is always given to us in the units. So it's likely if we have a speed distance time question, we're gonna see somewhere on that page, the word meters per second. Now meters per second means meters divided by second. Now remember meters is distance and seconds is time. So the speed, is the one that we're looking at is equal to the distance divided by the time. The same is true with miles per hour. Miles per hour means miles divided by hours. So miles again is distance and hours is time. So we have 
speed equals distance, miles, divided by time. OK, let's have a look for this next one. So this next one tells us density equals a mass divided by volume. So remember, the clues are always in the units. So the unit for density is grams per centimetres cubed. So remember that slash means divide. So density in this case equals grams divided by centimetres cubed. Grams is a unit of mass and centimetres cubed is a unit of volume. So we can see from there that the density equals the mass divided by the volume. The other example we've got here is kilograms per metres cubed. So again, kilograms is a mass and cubic metres or metres cubed is a volume. So remember, we've got density is mass divided by volume. So for this section, we've got hourly pay. So we can see that hourly pay is equal to your total income divided by your hours worked. And then following that, with a rearrangement of these three things, we get that total income is equal to hourly pay times hours worked and hours worked is equal to total income divided by hourly pay. These three things here are examples of reverse calculations and these are often asked for in your functional skills test for you to check your answers. OK, let's have a look at units. Here we go. This is a small table of different units that you're expected to know. So if you look at the lengths, we've got centimetres, metres, feet, miles, kilometres. And then next to them, we've got the area equivalent. A length of a centimetre will go to produce centimetres squared. A length of a metre will produce a metre squared. A foot will produce a square foot. A mile, a square mile. A kilometre, a square kilometre and so on. Volumes are the same. You'll notice that we've got the three up here to symbolise cubed. So we go in centimetres, the length will be centimetres, the area is centimetres squared and the volume is centimetres cubed. The reason why it's squared and cubed is squares are flat things which we use to which we can use to like measure out space and volumes are 3D spaces. And so if you want to fill up a 3D space, you're going to have to fill it with a 3D object. So they've settled on the cube and that's where we get it, the volume Volumes there, areas and lengths, take some time to make sure you're familiar with these units and that'll be good. Here we have some conversions for length. Often in your exam, you'll actually be given some of these, but it's useful to know them anyway. So what we have here is we've got 10 millimetres is one centimetre, 100 centimetres is one metre, 1000 metres is one kilometre, 2.54 centimetres is one inch, 12 inches is one foot, and three feet is one yard. Of these, the only one that I've ever seen given to you in an exam is this one here, okay? The others you're expected to know. With the conversions for volume, one centimetre cubed is one millilitre, a thousand millilitres is a litre, 4.5 litres is one gallon, 568 millilitres is one pint, and eight pints is one gallon. Out of these five, I have seen these three given to you in an exam, but you will need to make sure that you know that one centimetre cubed is one millilitre and a thousand millilitres is one litre. For the conversions of mass, we've got a thousand grams equals one kilogram. One pound is 16 ounces. We've got a thousand kilograms is one tonne and we have 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. Now, out of these four, I have seen these three given in exams before. However, you are expected to know that 1000 grams is one kilogram. Right, here we have some units for time. So for time, we need to know that 60 seconds is one minute, 60 minutes is one hour, 24 hours is one day, and seven days is one week. We also need to know about decimal time. Remember that time is often given to us in decimals and also in minutes. So as a useful thing to know, 0.5 hours is 30 minutes, 0.75 hours is 45 minutes, 0.1 hour is 6 minutes, 0.25 hours is 15 minutes. Now, if you are required to convert from decimal time to minutes, what we do 
is we multiply the decimal time by 60. For example, if we do 0.5 times 60, we get 30. And as we know, 0.5 hours is 30 minutes. And we can rearrange that so we can see that time in minutes divided by 60 will equal decimal time. And actually following those, I'm gonna rewrite the formula sheet and just add those to it. So hopefully if you've downloaded the formula sheet, they should be on that as well. Okay, let's have a look at the next page. On this page, I've written down some useful fraction decimal percentage equivalences that you'll need to know. Now, in theory, as long as you remember how to convert from fraction to decimal to percentage, then remembering these isn't actually that important. However, I do know that a lot of people struggle for time in the functional skills maths exam. So if you could take the time to memorise these things, it's really going to help you out as it will make the whole process of completing the paper a bit more fluid. OK, so here we have some. We've got one tenth is 0.1, which is 10 percent. And on the side here, I've also written another example that we can kind of see from using this example. So if one over 10 equals 0.1 equals 10 percent, then what we can see is that three over 10 would be 0.3, which would equal 30 percent because we've simply multiplied all of those things by three. Um, again, with if one fifth is equal to 0.2, which is 20 percent, we can see here that two fifths would be equal to 0.4 and that's equal to 40 percent because we've multiplied all of those things by two. So I'm not going to take the time to go through all of these, but if you want to memorise them, it is worthwhile and it is helpful. And at the bottom of the sheet, I've also got here the formulas for how you convert between one to the other. So I'm just going to do a quick example of how each of these work. So firstly, we can do three over four is three divided by four, which equals 0.75. Next, we've got decimal to percentage. So that's decimal times 100. So let's say I've got 0.41 times 100 equals 41%. And now we've got percentage to decimal, which is the reverse. So it's percentage divided by 100 gives us the decimal. So let's say we've got 64%. 64 divided by 100 equals 0.64. And lastly, we've got percentage to fraction, and I've written here, put over 100 and then simplify. So let's say we had 24%, so we could write 24 over 100, and then we can see that we can simplify this by dividing them both by 2, so it becomes 12 over 50. I can see that we can simplify that again, so that's going to become 6 over 25. Now, there's no numbers that 6 and 25 are both divided by, so that then will remain as the fraction in its simplest form. OK, right. On this page, I've just done some quick tips on multiplying and dividing fractions just for you to kind of read through to help. Um, I've put some examples here. I'll just explain them. So the first one for multiplying, it says two over three times five over nine. So simply to multiply fractions, we do the top of the fraction times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So here we can see that we've got. 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 9 is 27. OK, with dividing, it's actually, there's a rule, which is top times bottom over bottom times top. OK, so what that means is we've got 1 over 3 divided by 2 over 4. So I've got the 1 times the 4, which has given me this 4, and I've got the 3 times the 2, which has given me this 6. If you need some practice of these, I would suggest going to the tutorial. These are just quick things to remember if you're preparing for your exam. I don't mean to skim over the understanding. Next on this page, I've got adding. So here we go. I've put two steps here for how to add. Step one is to convert to equivalent fractions with the same bottom or denominator. And the second is to add the new top numbers and keep the bottom number. So here we go. For this one, we've got 2 over 5 plus 3 over 4. Now, I've changed them both to have a denominator, a bottom number of 20. 2 over 5 is equivalent to 8 over 20. And 3 over 4 is equivalent to 15 over 20. So now the numbers have the same bottom number. I can simply do 8 add 15, which gives me 23 twentieths. So 2 over 5 plus 3 over 4 equals 23 twentieths. The same is the principle with subtracting. So here we go, we've got 6 over 7, take away 2 over 3. 
So convert to equivalent fractions with the same bottom. So here we go, we've got 6 over 7 is equivalent to 18 over 21. And 2 over 3 is equivalent to 14 over 21. 18 over 21, take away 14 over 21, becomes 4 21s. On the bottom of this fraction page, I've got these two things as well, which is simplifying and mixed to improper. So simplifying is when we write the fraction in its simplest form. So here we can go, here we go, we've got Step one is look for a number you can divide the top and the bottom by. Step two is keep going until you can go no more. So here we go, we've got 80 over 120, which becomes 8 over 12 because I've divided them both by 10. And that becomes 4 over 6 because I've divided them both by 2. And that becomes 2 over 3 because I've divided by 2 again. And then once I'm at 2 and over 3, I can do no more dividing. So therefore, 2 over 3 is the fraction in its simplest form. OK, lastly, on this page, we have mixed to improper fractions. OK, so the mixed number is like this one, which is two and three over four. And that means two wholes and three quarters. So the steps here are one, multiply the whole part of the mixed number by the bottom part of the fraction and then add the fractions. Here you go. We see two times four gives us eight over four. So that eight over four is referring to this bit here. And then it says we add on the three over four. And so what we can see there is that eight quarters and three quarters makes 11 quarters in total. So two and three quarters can also be written as 11 quarters because it's just two different ways of writing quarters. OK, if you want to download this formula sheet, you can find it available at crackmaths.co.uk.